sympathetic nerve to the brain. A complex process in the blink of an eye. The diurnal monkey has got a very small cornea because it doesn't need to let in as much light, uh, which you can see here, as the nocturnal lemur, which has a very large cornea that takes up nearly the entire anterior surface of the eyeball. For night hunters, a bigger cornea is key to catching fast-moving critters in the dark. And one night hunter has pushed this anatomy to the max. Tarsiers are something completely unique. There's nothing else like this in the world of vertebrate eyes. The diameter of the tarsier cornea is almost equal to the diameter of the eyeball. There are 5,400 species of mammals. Relative to size, none have eyes as large as the tarsier. At six inches tall, it's one of the world's smallest predators. But its surveillance system outsizes the competitions. So tarsiers need both highly sensitive vision and acute vision. One of the only ways you can get this is to build a bigger and bigger eye. And that's exactly what tarsiers have done. How big? Try bigger than its own brain. So this is the eye of a Philippine tarsier, and you can see that its cornea is actually a little bit larger than my own corneas. Uh, but what's really amazing about this is the fact that a tarsier's head is only this big. The tarsier's eyes are so large, they need extra support to keep from tumbling out. The eyeball extends past the margins of the orbit, and they have to have strong connective tissue in their eyelid to hold the eyeball in place. With immobile eyes, the creature compensates with a neck that rotates more than 180 degrees. Tarsier's visual adaptations show the extremes to which evolution will go. Many mammals, such as big cats, evolved another way to boost their nocturnal vision. A staple in fables and fairy tales, glowing eyes have haunted children for centuries. A nightmare to some, is evolution's gift to others. And they can see us just fine. They can see us a lot better than we can see them, for sure. If one of them was over there stalking us, we wouldn't even know that they were there. Even, you know, without this kind of light, they know when we're coming and they know who's coming. Eye shine functions as more than a mere scare tactic. It's an adaptation that has made cats spectacularly successful night hunters. These guys, they're, uh, they're very active at night, and uh, in fact, you can hear them making their noises, uh, particularly the lion when he starts to roar, even at this hour, high kiki. Also, the eye shine, not only can they see their prey better, but also I think it makes it more intimidating to any pred other predators that are out there. The source of the eye shine is buried deep in the anatomy of the cat's eye. Hold on to your hat. Kirk's careful dissection reveals its inner workings. First, the retina. Then, the light-sensitive tissue lining the back of the eye. This area is known as the tapetum lucidum. Tapetum lucidum is Latin for bright carpet. So it's the bright carpet in the back of your eye behind your retina. So how does the tapetum work? In your eye, or my eye, there's a black pigment behind the retina that absorbs the light so that it's not scattered. But in species with tapeta, any light that's not absorbed by the retina bounces off the tapetum, the mirror behind the retina, and it essentially has a second chance to be absorbed. So you've got twice the chance to absorb every incoming photon of light that your eye captures. On the rebound, some of the light shoots back out of the eye, resulting in a glowing effect. For cats, this mechanism yields extraordinary benefits. They require only one-sixth of the light that humans need to be active in the dark. I think of the tapetum as just this marvelous adaptation. Um, you know, it's such an elegant solution to a pretty straightforward biological problem. And, you know, putting a mirror behind your retina to increase sensitivity, what could be simpler? Cats were far from the only mammal group to evolve such an ingenious solution to night vision. Other species would reach the same result entirely on their own. But I think really the most interesting thing about the evolution of the tapetum lucidum is that it's such a good solution to this problem of enhancing sensitivity that many, many different groups of mammals have 
arrived at this same solution independently. What about us? Even though we are mammals, we struggle to see clearly at night. That's because 30 million years ago, our ancestors shifted from the night to the day. When these monkey-like creatures moved to a new niche, they would evolve eyes that could see the world like never before. The human eye, able to decipher 2.3 million colors with speed and precision that makes a computer look slow. Our color vision is superior to that of many other mammals who must get by with far less. To a dog, the world is virtually devoid of color. Only a small number of species, including our primate relatives, can see a full range of yellows, blues, greens, and most significantly, reds. But such adept color vision does not exist in the earliest primates. Its evolution has its roots in the aftermath of a mass extinction. About 66 million years ago, a gigantic asteroid caused the extinction of all non-avian dinosaurs and paved the way for the rise of mammals. After the dinosaurs disappear, mammals radiate. All of a sudden, they start diversifying, and one group of mammals is the primates, and they go straight for the trees. Once primates settle into the forest canopy, they evolve into new species. One of those lineages becomes day active, the ancestors of today's monkeys, apes, and humans. They evolve a new adaptation in their eyes not seen in earlier species, an expansion of their color vision, a standard range of colors consisting of blues and greens now include red. Why would primates need to see red in their new world? For clues, biologists look to primates today. Howling monkeys are this wonderful, unique animal that may give us some insights into our own evolutionary past. Biologist Nate Dominey has spent his career researching primates as a means of understanding our own evolution. They're almost like a time machine for looking at what the ancestral monkey in Africa and Asia might have been like. We might get clues to what its diet was like, its social behavior, its anatomy, and that ancestral animal was the one that gave rise to all subsequent monkeys and apes and ultimately humans. Domini wanted to know why natural selection favored improved color vision in our ancestors. What did they gain by evolving to see the color red? Domini went on a year-long journey to study primates in their natural habitats. Part of my PhD research was to go to Africa to study monkeys with different diets and to study chimpanzees and to see if there was some sort of common or unifying food item that they might have all turned to that might explain why these monkeys all routinely share a very similar type of color vision. Domini scanned the rainforest canopy for test subjects, hoping to capture leaf samples from where the monkeys had stopped to eat. But he had a problem. What a monkey eats was high above his reach. It's challenging in, in the rainforest in particular. When an animal is at the top of that tree eating something and you want the sample, there's not many ways to get it. Left with no other choice, he had to take up arms. We use this very stout handmade slingshot from Panama that fire small pebbles up into the canopy and leaves will come down. And it's a great way for sampling the, the types of foods that primates might eat. After collecting and packing up the key samples, Domini's real work began. Using an instrument called a spectrometer, he recorded the color of each leaf he had gathered in the field. You see that peak in this green spectrum? So that's telling you that this is a green leaf. Now you see how, compared to that last one, this is peaking much more here in this orange region into the red region. Nate's data yielded a remarkable discovery. Not only were the monkeys eating red leaves, 
red leaves compose the majority of their diet. It turns out the redder the leaf, the younger and more nutritious it is. Old, mature leaves, the green leaves, they are uh, tough, they're full of toxins. They're generally leaves you want to avoid. So primates in general tend to go for the youngest leaves possible. And if those young leaves also have a color cue that distinguishes them from mature leaves, then it may be ad advantageous to evolve um, a mechanism for detecting those young leaves. To primates, red wasn't simply another color. It was a beacon, a homing device, allowing them to target their key food source from a distance. If it sees red leaves in the canopy, then it knows automatically that those particular leaves are young. And so it can save energy, it can save time, it can travel directly to those young red leaves rather than randomly searching throughout its environment. Increased color vision, a strategic evolutionary leap that scientists discovered was one of many. Primates would soon reap the rewards of another crucial adaptation, binocular vision. It's a trait that predators have repeatedly evolved. But for primates, it served a new function. Primates have eyes at the front of their head, but they're not predators, so why would they do that? great thing about having two eyes pointing the same direction is you get depth perception. If you're gonna jump from one tree and try to land on another tree, depth perception is a really good trick to have. Over time, primates evolved a binocular field of vision of 60 degrees, on par with birds of prey. It's an evolutionary step that allows primates to capitalize on their hand-eye coordination. But this increased binocular vision comes at a price. Unlike the rabbit, primates now had a limited field of view. Most animals have eyes that are laterally placed on their heads, which is to say the eyes are on the side of the heads. And this provides these animals with a panoramic view. And that's really, really useful for detecting predators that may be coming from behind you. So there's a significant cost to putting your eyes in the front of your head. But the advantages are that you have better depth perception, you have better acuity. Once primates abandoned a vision system built for protection, birds of prey were ready to benefit. Swooping in from the sky and plucking primates from the treetops, these aerial terrors were threats to be reckoned with. Based upon the evidence that we have from the fossils, birds of prey have been exerting some type of selective pressure on primates for as long as there have been primates and raptors. Primates were easy targets for these winged predators. Under siege, primates evolved a new kind of behavior. They had to depend on each other. You can imagine then that once these animals evolved eyes on the front of their heads, they needed to live with other animals so that they could improve the probability of detecting a potential predator. Group living was the primate's answer to predation. It allowed them to maintain their high degree of binocular field of vision without sacrificing safety. Their keeping watch with a communal eye resulted in an evolutionary side effect. Larger, more powerful brains. So you can see the evolution of group living. And once group living evolves, you have a strong selective pressure, or you might say that evolution favored larger brains, because that's more individuals that you have to remember. Fossils show how the visual system of primates improved over time. Both the eye sockets and the optic nerve canal grew larger as brain size increased. Primates put huge demands on their sight, from color vision to increased binocular vision. They became extremely sensitive to the slightest change of expression on the faces of other primates. This increased need for visual processing fueled the development of intelligence. And you can see how this sort of runaway process for group living, larger brains, uh, avoiding predation, could give you the, the, the suite of characteristics that define the primate order to which we belong. A complex and mysterious organ, one that has fueled evolution for more than 500 million years, driving an eternal arms race between predator and prey and becoming an indispensable tool for millions of species. The eye, an engine of evolution, and one of its ultimate masterpieces.